Hey guys, welcome back to the Friday Q&A with Dr. Dre. As you can probably tell already from the title of this video, today I'm going to be addressing the most frequently asked questions here on my channel with regards to what causes rosacea and how to get rid of it. If you're new here, hi, my name is Andrea, welcome. I'm a dermatologist. I post day in the life of a dermatologist vlogs as well as skincare related sit down content. So if you like this video, I encourage you to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more content like this. All right, with that, let's get started. So what exactly is rosacea? Well, it's a chronic inflammatory skin condition with symptoms that can include any of the following, flushing, persistent redness of the face, bumpiness and uneven texture of the skin, and also dilated blood vessels. It predominantly affects facial skin, but rarely can affect other sites as well. Symptoms might also include burning, stinging, a dull, dry appearance to the skin, easy facial flushing, and sometimes facial swelling. Importantly, it's a medical condition, and as a dermatologist, I take it very seriously because I know how this medical condition can impact your daily life, self-confidence, and overall well-being. So question number one, what causes rosacea? Now, while the exact cause of rosacea has yet to be completely clarified, there are several factors that play an important role. First of all, blood vessels in the skin of people with rosacea are very sensitive and dilate very easily, leading to the symptoms of redness, flushing, and blushing. Various lifestyle and environmental factors, which otherwise are innocuous, can trigger a flare of rosacea. Other factors include irritation around our pores, sun exposure, sun damage, a hyper-responsive immune or inflammatory response, and psychological factors like being embarrassed, being under a lot of stress, or poor sleep. What may be triggering my rosacea? There are a variety of lifestyle and environmental things that may be triggering your rosacea. So one of the best things that you can do is to keep a diary of your rosacea symptoms in order to potentially identify what could be triggering your symptoms. And once, and once identified, avoidance of the trigger is a real key component of managing your rosacea. Some of the most common triggers, however, include sun exposure, emotional stress, changing from a hot or cold environment, wind, drinking alcoholic beverages, applying alcohol to the skin, spicy foods, heavy exercise, taking a hot bath, drinking a heated beverage, harsh skincare products. Another question that is often repeated here is, is my rosacea due to something that I'm allergic to? While allergies are unlikely to be at the main causative factor of rosacea, it's important to underscore that if you are sensitized to an allergen and become exposed to it, this can trigger a flare of rosacea by virtue of precipitating dilation of the blood vessels in your skin, leading to a flush. And once a flush starts, a flare of rosacea will be kicked off. Another question that I get from a lot of viewers is, I'm trying to live a healthy lifestyle and be active, but every time I work out, my face gets red and I'm really worried that it's going to make my rosacea even worse and even more persistent. What should I do? So work out early in the morning or late evening when temperatures are cool and mild. And if working out indoors, keep a fan going nearby and keep a damp, cool cloth around your neck. Also drinking cold liquids can combat the increased heat rising to your face and help quelch a potential rosacea flare. Likewise, chewing ice chips is another tip that might be helpful. So the next set of questions I'm gonna address is, well, how do I get rid of my rosacea? And is there a cure for rosacea? While there is no cure for rosacea, there are a variety of medical treatments as well as lifestyle modifications that can help control rosacea and even potentially eliminate the symptoms of your rosacea. How is rosacea treated? Well, the signs and symptoms of rosacea vary from individual to individual. Some people have more redness, some people have more uneven texture, some people have more skin thickening. So it's individualized. As always, I want to emphasize and encourage you to seek evaluation and management, either by a dermatologist or your primary healthcare provider. Now for the bumpiness and uneven texture and pimple-like lesions of rosacea are often treated with oral antibiotics. Alternatively, or in addition to antibiotics, there are a variety of other treatments that may be helpful, such as azelaic acid containing prescription creams applied to the face, known as finacea, which is anti-inflammatory. 
as well as sulfur-based washes. As far as the persistent redness of rosacea, there are two medications that can be prescribed that will not cure the redness, but will transiently take it away. There are the brand names in the United States, Rofade and Mervezo. These will take away the redness only transiently, and they do have the potential for something called rebound redness, in which after you stop using these ingredients, the redness becomes more noticeable. The next question that I get on here a fair amount is, I've started using a cream or a medication for my rosacea, and the redness is much better. However, now I've got broken blood vessels all over my face. What is that caused by? Well, here's the deal. The broken blood vessels were there from the beginning. However, as the medications begin to work to improve some of the redness, unfortunately they cannot take away the dilated blood vessels and those actually can become more noticeable as the background redness starts to fade. So what can be done for the dilated blood vessels if a cream or systemic medicine won't treat them? The best and most well-studied treatment for these dilated blood vessels is a laser therapy called a pulse dye laser that targets these abnormal blood vessels and potentially seals them off and eventually they will involute and go away. This is a cosmetic procedure and it's, and, uh, and it's best performed by a licensed practicing healthcare professional with experience using a vascular laser and treating these types of lesions as they, as they are the most well versed and experienced in the appropriate and safe settings for specifically targeting these enlarged blood vessels. Another question that comes up frequently and I think is inherently confusing is that why are antibiotics prescribed? Is rosacea due to an infection? Or it is thought and widely accepted that it's not the antimicrobial or antibacterial mechanism of these drugs, but rather an anti-inflammatory component that is helping to improve the rosacea. Additionally, these antibiotics are used for many, many inflammatory skin diseases and dermatology whose cause is not infection. So in other words, these drugs have widely been observed to have profound anti-inflammatory effects. Another question that comes up frequently, and I've addressed it in previous potpourri style Q&As, is, is there a risk of bacterial resistance after I've been on um, antibiotics, either systemic antibiotics or topical antibiotics for a long time? With regards to topical antibiotics, antibiotics applied to the skin result in such minimal systemic absorption of the, of the drug that, that there's virtually no risk of developing bacterial resistance at sites other than where the topical antibiotic was applied. However, there is concern that being on a systemic antibiotic long term does offer the potential for bacterial resistance. And so it is generally the goal of the treating physician to limit the amount of time that an individual is on these medications. In addition to concerns of antibacterial resistance, there are other potential side effects with taking oral antibiotics like upset stomach. They can make you even more sensitive to the sun. Another question that I get is, well, do the, do the creams lose effect over time? And the answer is no. The most popular set of questions that I get is, well, what skincare routine and skincare products would you recommend for somebody with rosacea? And it's actually a very, very important part of controlling your, your rosacea is taking into account your skincare routine. As I said at the beginning of this video, probably the, one of the most pervasive triggers of a rosacea flare is sun exposure. Protect your skin from the sun and wearing a broad spectrum SPF 30 or higher sunscreen is really, really an important part of your everyday skincare routine. I cannot emphasize that enough. I strongly caution you against buffing the face, exfoliating the face, derma rolling the face, as all of these things will precipitate a pretty pronounced flare of your rosacea that could potentially be more persistent. So rosacea skincare should start with gentle lukewarm water, washing the face with a gentle soap. I'll give you some recommendations in the description box below of well-tolerated soaps. Use a soft pad, a washcloth, or ideally your finger pads, not a harsh scrubbing brush uh, as this will precipitate a flare. Try and avoid pulling or tugging at your skin as well. Apply a gentle, non-pore clogging moisturizer to the wet face and then allow it to dry. 
Then wait, then wait a few minutes and allow it to dry before applying any prescription medications that your provider may have asked you to put on your face. Let, let any prescription medications sit on the face for about 10 minutes to appropriately soak into the skin, and then don a broad spectrum sunscreen. People with rosacea, however, tend to be very sensitive to many sunscreens, and they can cause stinging, burning, and sometimes accidentally worsening of, of the rosacea symptoms. I recommend a physical sunscreen containing zinc and or titanium dioxide exclusively, many of which I will link down below so that you have some names. Um, another tip is to look for sunscreens marketed for babies as if it's gentle enough for a baby's skin, it's probably okay for rosacea prone skin. Chemical sunscreen ingredients like avabenzone, however, can be very irritating to rosacea prone individuals, so I suggest avoiding those. The next, and then I also get a lot of questions about, well, what skincare ingredients should I avoid? Is a question that I, I get over and over again here. The skin of people suffering from rosacea is very sensitive and easily irritated by otherwise innocuous stimuli. So there are some ingredients that you should avoid using any skincare product that when applied to the skin burns or stings. If you have rosacea and you buy a skincare product, Make sure you keep your receipt so that you can take it back to the store should you identify it as offensive. No need to waste your money on a useless skincare routine. Individuals with rosacea commonly report the following ingredients as being irritating and or offensive to their rosacea. Alcohol, witch hazel, fragrance, menthol, peppermint, eucalyptus oil, clove oil, salicylic acid, and anything really marketed as an astringent, or a toner or an exfoliant. So I will do my best to link down below sunscreens, uh, washes, and moisturizers that are well tolerated in individuals with rosacea. Special creams for the eyes are not necessary. The moisturizers that I recommend uh, are generally well tolerated around the eyes. All right guys, so I really hope that this video was helpful in addressing uh, your questions about rosacea. If you have more questions, please ask them down in the comments section of this video and I'll do my very best to respond. I encourage you to subscribe for more content like this. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys in my next skincare video. Bye. <laughs>